Good morning. We expect a higher start and a better day for the bulls in office today, even as a few external irritants remain. Lack of buying from the big institutions has led to a drop on the volume front. Price erosion appears to have been done with on most counters, though one cannot really expect some hero Honda kind of rally in large counters. Easing tensions between the two Koreas coupled with strength in the US market will likely perk up the mood in India. European stocks too managed to post modest gains despite persistent concerns over the sovereign debt issues. Asian markets are mostly up this morning with the Kospi pacing the advance. The key indices in India will remain choppy and range bound in the near term. The Nifty is likely to remain in a range of 5,750 to 6,050 and support is expected to kick in at around 5,860 while resistance is likely at around 6,040. We expect a clear trend to emerge on the upside only after two consecutive closes above the levels of 5,965. In terms of other markets, the dollar has hinged higher while the euro remained subdued. Crude oil is hovering around the $90 per barrel mark and gold and other commodities are firm as well. The eurozone debt crisis will linger on and the credit downgrades may continue intermittently. But the US economy seems to be showing good resilience. The revised GDP data will be out for the third quarter on Wednesday and statistics are also expected on housing, income, spending, durable good orders and consumer sentiments. China has delayed a rate hike but further tightening is inevitable and could materialize early next year. For India, inflation is a major worry and the recent fall is partly due to the base effect. If diesel prices hike, there will be a fresh spike. Reports also point to a possible increase in LPG. The first two months of 2011 will be important as India Inc. will come out with its latest report card. The RBI will hold another policy meeting towards the end of January and the union budget will be announced in February. The political scene remains heated and will have some sentiment impacts on the markets in case of a major development. The FIs will net sellers of Rs 1.09 billion in the cash segment on Monday according to the provisional NSE data. The domestic institutional institutions were net bars at Rs 1.39 billion. FIs were net bars of Rs 7.78 billion in the FNO segment on the same day. Foreign funds were net sellers of Rs 1.13 billion in the cash segment on Thursday according to the SEBI website. The liquidity deficit in the system hit record high on the 20th of December with banks borrowing nearly 1.6 trillion rupees from the repo window. Domestic airline industry reported a 25% YOY increase in passengers flown in November this year. Advanced tax payments by India's top 100 corporate taxpayers rose 18.7% YOY in December. State-owned oil firms have seen their losses on diesel sales widen to over Rs 6 per litre. JSW Steel is close to buy a 45% equity stake in Ispat Industries for Rs 21.6 billion. Renbexi Laboratories' South African joint venture has backed a two-year government order to supply HIV medicines worth Rs 6.03 billion. Tata Chemicals is set to acquire British Salt, a soda ash raw material maker in the UK. Then Coal India has signed a MOU with the Shipping Corporation of India to create a joint venture to provide end-to-end -end logistic solutions for bringing internationally produced coal into the country. The Munjal family promoters of the Hero Group is likely to have over 50% stake in a special purpose vehicle to hold Honda's 26% share in Hero Honda following termination of the joint venture. Union Bank of India has raised its benchmark prime lending rate by 50 basis points to 13.25% and it has also raised retail term deposit rates across various maturities by 75 to 100 basis points and interest rate on one-year deposit to 8%. Reliance Infrastructure has enhanced the capacity of its existing network by adding 300 substations and 450 kilometers of cable network to its Mumbai distribution. Maruti Suzuki, India's completely made in India car, will hit the roads by 2012, and the company is likely to finalize the design within the next six months. Volta has to form a joint venture with Saudi Arabia's Alliance Financing Company to execute electromechanical projects in the country. Unity Infra Projects has secured three orders worth Rs 2 billion. Tata Steel is in negotiations to dispose of its South African plant and assets to raise upwards of 150 million US dollars in cash. 
Cinemax India plans to invest rupees 1 billion and double its screen to 200 by 2013. Coca-Cola India is planning to tie up with Gen Irrigation Systems to source orange pulp in India. Mosabia Solar has planned a capital expenditure of 500 to 600 million US dollars over the next three to four years for expanding its manufacturing capacity of crystalline cells and crystalline silicon modules in India. Lanco Infratech aims to generate 200 to 300 megawatt of solar thermal power over the next two years. Moving on to the recommendations, the technical calls are a buy on Colgate Palmolive. We advise buying the stock in the range of Rs. 861 to Rs. 865 with a stop loss to be maintained at Rs. 845 for a target price of Rs. 910. A buy on Syntex Industries. We recommend traders to buy the stock above levels of Rs. 185 with a stop loss to be maintained at Rs. 180 for a target price of Rs. 195. The derivative strategies are Long supply December future in the range of Rs. 367.5 to 369.5 for a target price of Rs. 377.5 and a stop loss is to be placed at Rs. 362.5 and long jet airways December future in the range of Rs. 725 to Rs. 730 for a target price of Rs. 755 and a stop loss is to be placed at Rs. 710. Thank you and have a great day ahead.